This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Good morning. Welcome to you and welcome to Congressman John Culberson, the U.S. Representative for the 7th Congressional District. How are you, sir? Good morning. Good to be with you. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. What's, you, you've been up to stuff that's good for the district? Working. <laughs> Working. Making sure that we're helping our constituents and our neighbors recover from this catastrophic storm. And fortunately, I'm in the right place at the right time, yeah. at the right moment. Yeah. Uh, the right committee on appropriations. We're so coming up. Make a difference. We're coming up a one year, the anniversary yeah. of that. And I know not too long ago, you and uh, Congressman Green wrote to say, "Look, we need some more time." Yes. How is that progressing? The request. Congressman Green and I work together closely, as I do with the whole delegation, in a bipartisan way to help the area recover from the storms. Uh, Gene and I wrote a letter to FEMA asking that Houstonians be given an extra six months to apply for FEMA disaster relief. And I'm optimistic that we will be given the extension because we need it, because no one who flooded should be left behind when they're asking for federal disaster assistance. You, uh, are you surprised at how long it's taken this region uh, to, to recover? I mean, it's, a lot of people, when we were going through this, I remember telling people, look, this is gonna take some time, it, but it really is still impacting people who are, have not gotten back on their feet. It is, it is. This is the most catastrophic weather event in the history of the United States. It's the largest rainfall event in the history of the United States. We saw so much rain in Houston that if it were spread over the United States, it would cover the entire continental United States to a depth of two inches. This is a anywhere between a, a five to 10,000 year flood event, maybe worse. So it's a catastrophe that's taken time to recover. And so as the appropriator for Southeast Texas, as a subcommittee chairman, I was in the right place at the right time to help us recover. And as a matter of fact, the new chairman of the full appropriations committee from New Jersey, Rodney Frelinghuysen, found me on the House floor, Cambrell, after the storm and said, uh, I'm praying for you, but I want you to know, John, I remember you were the only Texas Republican to vote for Hurricane Sandy relief when my constituents were drowning. So how do you, what can I do? Mm -hmm. How can I help? So he let me spearhead this bill, Cambrell, and I put together with Senator Cornyn in the Senate with the Florida delegation, I spearheaded $141 billion in hurricane relief, the largest hurricane recovery package in the history of the country. That money has been passed through Congress. I've got that done, and it's on the way to Houston to help us finish out every federally authorized flood control project in Harris County. It really takes a long time. It though, takes a long time. What do you tell people about their optimism they should have about them being made whole ultimately when it's all said and done? First of all, people should know that there is a short-term plan, an intermediate plan, and then a long-range plan. For intermediate, for right now, we're focused on helping people recover, making sure that they get uh, short-term relief to rebuild their homes, that they get access to there's a variety of programs that my office can help people with. This legislation that I helped pass that spearheaded the House has enough money there to help make sure people are made whole as much as possible. Intermediate, I'm working with the Army Corps of Engineers right now, pushing them to get out and do some uh, increasing capacity in Attics and Barker Reservoir very, very rapidly. To There's some short-term things there that can be done to increase the retention capacity of Attics and Barker, which will protect everybody downstream. But the good news is everybody needs to know that because I'm in the right place at the right time on the Appropriations Committee, and my colleagues trust me, that I was able to get enough money to finish every federally authorized flood control project in Harris County at full federal expense. That means Braze Bio is paid for, mm -hmm. done. That means, uh, that means White Oak Bio, if you live in the northwest part of the county, Jersey Village, you're gonna be protected. I've got the money to finish out that project through the Harris County Flood Control District, also Hall and White Oak, uh, White Oak Hall and Hunting Bio, mm -hmm. as well as Braze, and then Clear Creek on the south side. Um, I want to remind people, we, we're going to do another segment here, and we're going to do Newsmakers Extra, so we have some more time to talk about it. You're in the middle of a, another campaign now to win right. another year, and you've been doing it for quite some time now. You've vanquished everybody up to this point. Um, what do you tell your constituents as a reason for them to send you back as opposed to your opponent? Well, I've proven my constituents can trust me to keep my word to represent that honorably and consistently as a free market fiscal conservative. I've also demonstrated that I'm in the right place at the right time to deliver results for the people of Houston. I began my service in Congress by spearheading the effort to expand the Katy Freeway, and here most recently, because I am in the right place at the right time, I've been able to deliver for the people of Harris County and Southeast Texas to recover from Hurricane Harvey. What do you tell people other than Harvey and flooding issues, uh, what do you sense are, are the most important or the most important issue for your constituents? What are you hearing? Because you're out there talking all the sure. time. What are you hearing from them as well, most important to them as a priority? First, second, almost third are is flooding really? in the hurricane. Okay. That's number one on everybody's mind. But then also the economy. I mean, when you when you step back for a moment and you look, 
as a, a free market fiscal conservative, I'm going to instinctively always support tax cuts and always support deregulation. So I've been there to help remove, for example, I helped remove the ban on exporting American oil and gas, which has helped unleash the Houston economy and unleash the American uh, oil and gas production and exploration. I've also helped spearhead the largest tax cut in American history, which has allowed us all to keep more money in our pockets and cause the economy to help take off like a rocket. We've worked as conservatives to, in, the, in the House, the Senate, White House, working together to deregulate the U.S. economy as much as possible, to unleash American ingenuity and job growth. Mm -hmm. So we've seen as a result the level, lowest levels of unemployment and some of the highest levels of employment that we've had in the nation's history. So as jobs become, people compete for, job, for those jobs, that's driving up wages. People are seeing more money in their pocket. The economy is growing, and we're, I'm continuing to, make, to focus on recovering from the flood, rebuilding and preparing for the next one, and then growing the Texas economy and strengthening our oil and gas economy. And of course, it's important to focus on that. In the meantime, there's noise coming from Washington, D.C. Not necessarily from you, because you're here now, but nonetheless, there are a lot of things happening. I got to talk to you about some things that happened this week, this past week. President revoked the security clearance of former CIA Director John Brennan. He said mm -hmm. he said it was, um, he posed a national security threat, at least in a statement. But then later in the day, he told the Wall Street Journal that Brennan had been a part of what he called the rigged witch hunt and that quote it's something that had to be done your thoughts about using the power of the presidency to try to silence critics or at least that's what it appears to be happening. I think anyone who leaves government service that has had a top secret clearance should lose it when you leave the government you don't need it anymore I don't know why anyone who has had top secret clearance should keep that once they leave so the you government. think that tradition is he should have lost it automatically. What do you say to the government? Those, who, keep that? those who say they should keep it is when they have uh, situations that they have to deal with, they need to have some sort of timeline. That could be handled. For example, if, you're, if you leave the CIA, for example, or you leave the FBI, I'm my subcommittee, I'm chairman of the Commerce Justice Science Subcommittee, so I'm responsible for funding all federal law enforcement. If you leave the, uh, the, the Department of Justice or the CIA, uh, you, you should lose your security mm -hmm. clearance. And then if you need to come back to help work on a case, there's ways to do that. Yes. You could come in and get clearance for a short period right. of time on a particular case. And I, and I take your point, and if you're going to do that, why not do that generally instead oh, of making the proposing. point on that's somebody who may be who's that's voicing be. against you, who says things against you as the president. Now you take that one, but you don't take the other ones. What, I, what kind of it, sign it is that saying? As a, as, a, as a public policy, we make it, make it apply to everybody. It should be handled, everyone should be treated the same way, and that is you lose your clearance when you leave the government. That's not complicated. You're not concerned about the image or the optics of somebody who's a critic getting their security clearance taken and everybody else keeps theirs? Every, no, everyone ought to lose theirs. It ought to be I'm talking about the optics equally. of this particular one with well, Brennan. But this dem demonstrates is that the Congress needs to be, we may need to go back in and change the law to be sure that people, when they leave the government, they should leave their security clearance behind. Everyone should be treated equally. When you come back and work on a case, you can come in and get it for a 24 to 48 hour period to help with law enforcement, for example. There's some who suspect that since that statement was dated July 26 or something that came out this week, that it might have been done as an effort to turn the attention away from the uh, former uh, staffer, Omarosa, who made many claims about this president, uh, including uh, him using the N-word, but that's just one of the claims, and it prompted the president to call her a dog. Uh, that sort of thing is the kind of thing that, from the White House is quite unusual. Uh, do you think those kinds of statements hurt or help you in your district when you're dealing with a district that's kind of demographically changing? Well, I think it's important for the president and the White House to always treat everybody with dignity and respect. I think it's important that we, particularly the president of the United States, speak in a way that's measured and reflects uh, the importance of the job and reflects the, um, the immense power and responsibility of the United States and the world. Mm -hmm. So certainly on my behalf as the representative for District 7, I always treat this job and the responsibility with great respect and it's important I think that all of us, on speaking on behalf of the United States, uh, treat not only everybody with respect, that we speak on behalf of the country with great respect and with restraint. Mm -hmm. I always like the idea of walking. Yeah. So Teddy Roosevelt said walk softly and carry a big stick. It works. Wouldn't you want to call him and say, look, just just ease up on that kind of talk while I'm running in this thing because people well, that's might what not. Well, I'm sitting here talking about right now. Yeah, Every chance yeah. I get, I think it's important to uh, talk softly. Carry a big stick. Carry a big stick. <laughs> I got to remember that. I remember that. I think I was almost around when that was going yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've got more with Congressman Col Colberson after the break here. We're going to talk about.